Hey, what is going on guys? In this video, I'm doing a review of the Western Digital TV Media Player. Now keep in mind, this is not the same as the Western Digital TV Live Media Player from 2012. This is the 2014 edition, despite it looking identical to the 2012 version, and it has a similar name. Now keep in mind, after a few software updates, there is still no Netflix app included in this media player. Western Digital has no plans to include Netflix. In fact, they kind of boast about it on their website. So if I just saved you about 15 minutes of not watching this video, be sure to close this video, but before you do, hit the like button just for making that convenience for you. Now starting off with the remote control, this is quite comfortable, it's one of the best I've ever held. This is due to a couple of things, you have this groove at the back which feels quite natural with a couple of fingers arch around it, and the texture at the back is rather comfortable as well. Not only have the primary function buttons like fast forward, rewind, navigation up, down, left, right, enter and back are all easy accessible at the middle. Now going over the physical components of this media player, it's unknown how much power this media player consumes, it's not listed anywhere on the internet. But moving along, it does have dimensions of 130 by 100 by 30 millimeters. And on the front left side, you see a little glossy material, that's where the remote sensor is, as well as the LED light letting you know that the media player is on, and the first of two USB ports, whereas the sides have nothing. Now going over to the back, there's a lot happening here. You have the power adapter port, an optical audio output port, ethernet port, HDMI port, the second USB port, and keep in mind that both USB ports do support allowing the user to plug in a USB keyboard for typing. Now I don't know what size capacity limit hard drive you can plug in. It varies depending on the size of the hard drive and how many files are on the hard drive and how it's sorted, so it's impossible for me to answer what size hard drive can this thing handle. Then of course a little bit over to the right you have the composite port. You also have a wireless adapter built inside which supports a max of wireless 802.11n. As for the wireless strength, it's impossible for me to answer because it varies on how many walls are in between your router and this device, how strong is your router signal, etc. Finally on the bottom of the media player you will notice two specific holes. This allows you to wall mount this device. And over on the top left you notice a reset writing. If you use a pin to press it, it actually allows you to data factor reset this device. Now in regards to file type playback, which is obviously the most important thing about a media player, this media player can pretty much play anything I can throw at it. This includes MKV, MP4 with H.264 compression, uh, DTS audio, AVI, DivX files, pretty much the top file types you can think of and even more. I'll have a list of the official supported file types from the Western Digital website. I'll paste that in the video description in case you want to know more. One thing to keep in mind is that I can't get it to play 4K videos. I have tested a few different file types of 4K videos that I have. However, this device is advertised as playing 1080p HD, it's not advertised as playing 4K, so that's alright. In terms of the internal hardware like the processor, RAM, etc, there's nothing listed anywhere on the internet, but I wouldn't exactly expect them to be great because this isn't exactly the most advanced media player available. What you're seeing now is just the general interface of the media player. This is the central hub of it, this is your favorite section and is what you'll see whenever you turn the media player on. Now there is the ability to have a certain app open up whenever you power on the device which is a nice feature to have, but the favorite section is what you'll primarily see. I'll get back to this a bit more, but let me go through some of the more generic boring stuff like the settings menu. You can adjust the audio, video output, the appearance, like the background wallpaper and so forth and whatnot. You also have the ability to update the software. Now as of right now I am running the latest software. And uh, do keep in mind that anything you see is currently with the most updated software and there hasn't been many software updates available for this media player, which isn't exactly a good thing and you'll understand why as the review progresses. So let's continue on, I'm going to show you guys all the apps that are available. Now keep in mind that the apps available will vary depending on where you live. So the apps that you see on my version of the Western Digital TV might not be the same for you depending on where you live in the world. So I'm just going to go through these a bit quickly, you can just pause if you see a logo you recognize, but I'm not going to stop on every single one because there is a crazy amount, I think there's about 60 apps available roughly in my region. And as I'm progressing through this list, I do want to mention that a majority of these apps, they operate terribly. They're very, very slow on this media player. They're, they're just, the speed is just atrocious on them. So the YouTube app is a terrible experience. It takes quite a bit of time to open up. And as I'm scrolling down through this list, I'm just tapping away on the remote, but the 
Media Player seems to have some trouble keeping up with my commands. So one of the biggest gripes I have about this YouTube app, I obviously tried to search for my own YouTube channel just for demonstration purposes. Now here's the thing, my YouTube name is Babbling Boolean, which requires a space in between the name, Babbling and Boolean. Unfortunately, on the on-screen keyboard, there's no space anywhere. I know that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually true. I've gone through every list like this, going through every single letter and character, and even on these special characters, there's no space anywhere. I tried to type Babbling Boolean as one long word, it still wouldn't find it, which is bizarre because on the YouTube app, on Android, or on a PC if you're visiting the website, it finds it just fine, but this media player doesn't do that. So I have a very, very powerful router, and I have a very strong internet connection, but the YouTube app just takes forever to load a video. It's not even playing in HD quality right now, the quality is probably like 24p or 240p, sorry. It's atrocious. It does play HD, it does take a while to keep up, but what I find bizarre is that my smart TV, which has a YouTube app built in, plays HD instantly, and it's in the exact same spot where this media player is currently placed. Overall, the YouTube app is a horrible, atrocious experience. You know, in case you're wondering how I was able to find my YouTube channel, even though I was having trouble before, it's because there is a Android app, a remote app available. I believe there's also one for iOS, but the keyboard function on it is absolutely horrible. Sometimes I'll be inputting text on it, it won't respond with the media player, sometimes I try to delete, it won't delete. It's overall, the, the just typing in this media player is one of the worst experiences you'll ever have. Generally though, the remote is somewhat responsive with the media player and you have a lot of shortcuts to all the apps, so instead of scrolling through a massive list on the media player, you can just instantly tap it here on the remote control app and it'll open instantly. So the major problem with the remote control app of course is the keyboard. The speed of this media player and responsiveness tends to fluctuate, but 9 out of 10 times it's really slow. Generally when it's inside any app, if you press the home button on the remote to go instantly to this screen, it does take quite a bit of a wait. It's just find it bizarre that it takes that long to close any app. But moving along, the Hulu Plus app is actually one of those rare experiences where things are actually very smooth and very fast. So fast forwarding just a little bit, you'll notice that the Hulu Plus app is simply put, well, unattractive. In other devices, other media players, and my smart TV, it's a much, much more attractive layout and the interface is a lot more fresh. Now, on this media player, it's pretty ugly, but it's okay. It does what it's supposed to. And finally, on this Western Digital media player, it's fast and responsive. Before, it was one of the worst apps you could ever use, but now it's actually decent in response time. What I find bizarre is that YouTube videos have better compression than Hulu Plus videos. However, Hulu Plus on this app loads a lot faster and the HD content is loaded in, well, HD quality almost instantly for me. Again, this varies depending on your internet connection, but I just find it bizarre that the YouTube app struggles with it when it should be the opposite. Although the one really annoying thing is that fast forwarding and rewinding, you have to consistently tap the left and right button. So if you're watching a 42 minute episode show like I'm showing right now, I'm just tapping the left and right button a lot. I, this is how long it's taking to get through. You can't just hold the button and it'll go. And of course, the fast forward and rewind button are just as slow. I'm using it right now, it doesn't seem to make a difference. Now, Western Digital has gone and done something rather interesting with this media player. They're now allowing developers to make their own apps, finally. However, there's no area you can just download all the apps you want and load onto a USB stick and install it onto this media player. You have to be able to get it somehow, some way, and then just load it onto a USB stick. They expect developers to use it themselves and not share it with the community, which is very bizarre. But I'm sure there'll be a place somewhere on the internet available soon enough where you can download and share apps. There's also a download app which allows you to manage your FTP and peer-to-peer -peer connection, downloads and whatnot through this media player. Although I wouldn't recommend it though. So with that said, there's no easy way to download additional apps. The best method is still to get them via a software update straight from Western Digital which of course is very limited on what type of apps you'll be getting. Not only that, there's also no web browser built into this media player. Now let's finally go on to home video content. This is stuff that you'll have on your computer or from someone else and you want to play it back. No streaming, just your own video content. As I mentioned, it seems to play everything, but loading a video does take a while. I just find this so bizarre because previous Western Digital media players never struggle like that. They seem to open almost instantly. I find it ironic that a newer, more upgraded media player takes longer to load videos taken from the USB stick. So let's take a MP4 video I have here, I just want to demonstrate something. Fast forward and rewind at 32x is really, really slow. 
So this is taken from my storage, it's another YouTube video, it's a review video of the Nexus player actually, I'll put a link to that review in the video description. So you do have the ability to keep tapping the fast forward or rewind button and hit 32x. I just find it that it's really slow though, it's not that fast, it seems to be struggling just to get past a few minutes. Now there is a workaround trick to fast forward and rewind a little bit faster. If you hit the fast forward button or the rewind button and then hit the next or previous track button, it will fast forward or rewind in 10 minute intervals. That still doesn't excuse the fact that fast forward and rewind at 32x is really bad. So while on the files app where you can browse your local storage, you do have the ability to access additional options shown here at the top. Of course, you can just simply press the corresponding color button on the remote for faster access. I just wanted to show it to you guys here. So if I were to select something like say the red one and I open it, I can actually choose where do I want to access my files from. So local storage is obviously the USB stick that's plugged in the front or back of this media player. Media server will be like third party apps, so for example I have the LG Share app in which I stream media content to my smart TV, I can access it from here. Network share is of course Windows share or Mac shared folders, so you can actually share folders directly from your computer and share it straight into this media player. And the general responsiveness is pretty much equal to that of the media content being played from the USB stick, which is good and bad because it plays a lot of media file types, but opening up that file takes a while. But once it's open, if your internet connection is fast enough, or rather your home network connection like your router, if it's fast enough, it can be quite responsive. So here I'm accessing my LG Share program. I'm able to filter through music, photo, and videos, and I'm able to filter through just generally the same options like by folder, rating, so forth, and whatnot. So again, opening a video from my network, if I just tap this to open up, it's an MP4 file, it does take a while to load up. But the bizarre thing is that once it's loaded up, it seems to play just fine. I'm able to fast forward and rewind really quick. So moving over to games, there are some games available on this media player, but I just wanted to give you a quick demonstration that they're just 2D games. Nothing really to boast about, but I do feel that I had to share this with you guys. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is Mirrorcast. This is basically my Samsung Galaxy Note 4 being mirrored. So I'm able to basically share what's being shown and the response time seems to be about a second and delay. Which is really impressive though, that, that might sound like an annoyance to some people but considering this is screen mirroring wirelessly, that's quite impressive. Overall, don't expect great things to be able to play games for example but the experience of just mirroring your device to the screen is pretty neat. So the Western Digital TV has a potential to be an amazing media player, but it just falls short of it. So over the last two previous models, Western Digital hasn't really improved much. What I find especially bizarre is that in terms of video playback off the network or the USB stick, when opening a media file, it loads slower than last year's model. It, it's actually a downgrade in terms of speed in some ways. Now in terms of video playback, it, this is one of the best media players you can get. You, I can't deny that. It plays almost everything except 4K footage, but this is not a 4K media player. The issue I have is that it's just slow, and it's got a lot of bugs, and there hasn't been many software updates to fix those bugs. And then of course is the big elephant in the room, there's no Netflix app. Now a lot of people argue that, hey, not everyone has Netflix, not everyone needs to have it, but you have to think of it this way, just after YouTube, it's the second most popular streaming video service in the world. It's available in over 40 countries. That is a popular, popular video streaming service. But there's one thing I have to mention that's very, very important. This media player has the best network playback of videos I have ever used. The bugs alone will drive you mad. Like the YouTube app I demonstrated is very slow, very buggy. There's no space when typing. And that doesn't include the other various bugs I've run into where this media player just kind of freezes up on you. They were just Random ones that just kept popping up, I don't have time to list. For everyone else, this isn't really worth the $100. If you can get it on sale, maybe consider it, but $100, look somewhere else. So that's my review of the Western Digital TV, the 2014 edition media player from Western Digital. If you found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.